Hey, good morning, Flo. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on generally the attendance of these voluntary, and I stress it as voluntary uh, practices. And uh, is it your understanding that everyone will be present and participate in the mandatory next week? Yeah, I expect to see everyone at the mandatory mini camp. Um, like you mentioned, it's voluntary. So we've gotten uh, uh, a good number of guys here, I would say, over these last few weeks. Um, and we've been happy with it. Uh, and, you know, we're happy to work with the guys that we have here and get them coached up and uh, you know, help them improve and get better at their fundamentals, their techniques, the communication, uh, and things of that nature. So, Armando? Morning, Flo. So we're going to talk to Will Fuller here in a little bit after practice. And I'm wondering if you could share um, why him as a, a free agent signing and what you see in him that attracted the team to him? Well, I mean, I think he's, uh, you know, he's smart, he's tough, he's competitive, uh, he's talented. You know, had we had multiple conversations, you know, during that process and team first guy. And I just felt like he would bring a competition and, and talent into the room. Uh, you, know, and, you know, as many talented players as we can bring in and uh, guys who are willing to compete and, uh, and uh, you know, improve our team. That, that, that was the uh, that was that was the goal. Uh, and, and if I could ask, you know, obviously speed is a big deal in part of his game. How attractive was that? Even though I guess you you guys already knew you were going to add a speed receiver in the draft. But just, you know, as an overall talent, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, obviously very good speed, but uh, good hands, uh, you know, good after the catch. Uh, good as a route runner, uh, smart, you know, can play multiple positions. So, uh, you know, that's one one area that, that obviously we, we feel good about. But, you know, he's, he's, he does a lot of good things, and I think he'll bring a lot of competition to the room. Omar? Good morning, Flo. Uh, I wanted to ask you about leadership. A lot of the leaders from the past years have either left via free agency or been kind of released. Uh, well, not kind of released. Um, how do you fill that void? I know you've got a young team. You do have some veterans here. How do you step up? How do you get guys to step up and, and become leaders? We've got a, we still, we, we, we have a, Good leadership on the team. Uh, I think that's something that you're, you're constantly trying to develop each year, um, especially with you know uh, younger players. And um, you know, I think we've we've got some veteran players who who who, who provide will, will provide us leadership as well. Uh, and you need it. You know, every team needs it, um, offensively, defensively, and in, in the kicking game. Uh, yeah. So I think as a staff, you know, we try to pinpoint guys who, you know, have some, some of those qualities and uh, try to empower them uh, and, uh, you know, try to help them grow in those areas. And I think that's, that's, that's part of the job as well, um, you know, from my standpoint and, you know, us as a coaching staff and really us as an organization. And, uh, you know, I think we have some guys who, who, who fall in that category and uh, we'll try to help them grow and develop. Um, and we have some guys who are, who are older and have been in those roles as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll continue to try to help them grow as well. How, how do you help those younger guys grow and develop into that, that role? Like what is, what's the process? Um, putting them in the leadership council or making them lead team meetings? What, what does the process look like? I, mean, I think it's different. It's different for each, each individual. Um, I think I'm going to lead differently than you would or – or uh, Safed Wood or, you know, Armando or Kyle. I mean, it's, it's, everyone's a little bit different. Some people are, are more outgoing and, uh, you know, louder. Some people are, you know, by example, some people uh, say nothing. And then when they speak, people listen. I mean, I think it's, there's, there's different you know, types of leaders and they come in all, uh, it's not like, a, it's not a one size fits all. Uh, and I think, um, 
I think there's a little bit of, of, uh, of, uh, you can develop it. And I think it's, it's something that, yeah, you put them in situations where, uh, you know, they, uh, they have an opportunity to, you know, speak up, uh, and, and I think there's something that it's something that people have to get more comfortable with. And, um, you know, there, there are times where, you know, there's guys who, who that's not what they want to do. And if, if you don't identify as a leader, then, you know, there's, there's no point in, in even kind of putting them in those, in those situations. So, uh, again, it's case by case, you know, it's, it's a much longer discussion than this and discussions that we've had, uh, you know, here, obviously this year, and, you know, last year and year before it's something that i think it's it's important and we'll uh, we'll continue to try to develop it you know with with guys on our team thank you kyle good morning coach uh we heard some, recently heard from coach alexander talking about what awaits noah igbenogany this season as he's introduced to some reps inside versus last year's focus which ga said was on things like technique and transitions I was hoping with your personal coaching experience and background, if you could share some insight as to the unique challenges that DBs face when asked to play inside as compared to on the perimeter and any traits you feel are needed to excel in one role versus the other. Uh, well, I think, you know, GA was, was right. And he played, uh, Noah played pr predominantly on the perimeter last year. I think that's, and that, that in itself in this league, um, it's not easy. So it was, uh, stick them in one position, let them learn the techniques, the fundamentals, feel the speed, feel the, uh, you know, quickness of the receivers, you know, go through the different, uh, you know, combinations that happen in different coverages. And once you feel more comfortable in, in, in that specific role, then, um, you know, this year, obviously we feel like, uh, you know, he's ready to, to move, move and, and, you know, at least take some reps uh, inside. Um Look, versatility is is, uh, is important, you know, to our team. So, um, you know, we're going to move guys around, um, not just Noah, but really everyone, you know, in that corner room and in, in the secondary, really across the board. Um, but as far as what it takes to to, to play inside, I think it's um, obviously speed and quickness and ability to tackle. Um, I think those guys who play the nickel position end up you know, and run fits a little bit more than guys on the perimeter. So uh, just an understanding of, uh, you know, fronts and what's happening in front of you. Um, more opportunity to, to blitz. Um, and then just from a coverage standpoint, uh, you know, you don't have the sideline. So they can go inside, they can go outside. Um, so you don't have that as, a, as an extra defender or, or, or a place you can uh, kind of push the, the receiver to. And, uh it's it's tough playing in there you know there's a there's a it's not easy and you know from a mental standpoint it, it, there's a lot going on as well so uh you know as many guys as we can we can we can uh get to play inside and play different roles i think uh nick needham's grown in that role uh, justin coleman's played that position you know in the past and uh jamal perry as well so uh, we're just going to continue to 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 train guys and uh help them improve, grow. And I think, you know, a lot of times if you you can play inside and you've played outside and you understand what's happening as an outside corner to the inside corner, if you have that kind of understanding, you know, when you're making calls and those guys are working together, um, uh, there's a little bit more of a, hey, I know what you're going through. I, I've been in that spot, uh, you know, and they can kind of, it, 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 oftentimes it works a little well, it, it works better together. Thank you, Coach. Jose? Um, thank you, Coach. Good morning. Um, I wanted to ask you about Durval. It's been a while since you talked about him, and um, I know early on when he was with the team, um, there was talk about fundamentals, and, and I want to know where is he at the moment and what are your expectations for him in, in, in 2021? Thank you. Well, he's one of our hardest working players. Um, I mean, it's very important to him that he uh, – uh, improves and gets better at whatever technique, fundamental, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that he's working on. Um, I think he's, uh, you know, talented, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. Uh, I think uh, he's still learning the game. Um, and, 
but I also think he's 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 made a lot of improvements over the last couple of years. And uh, you know, I'm excited to see him in, in uh, you know in training camp. Obviously, well, you know, today and then uh, the vet mini camp and in training camp and in preseason games, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to compete. And and uh, you know, I think he'll do well. Stop it. Hey, Flo, good morning. I, I wanted to ask you um, something along the lines of your comments to Peter King a couple weeks ago um, to where you said the guys we got in 19, the guys we got in 20, the guys we got in 21 uh, that we get in the draft, that's the team. You know, they'll be the reason that we make noise or don't make noise. Um, I, I guess where, where do you kind of see the team right now? I know we've used the word rebuild. Um, is it kind of after that stage? What would you kind of call the stage that the team is kind of at right now and where you see it? I think we're trying to get improve and get better on a daily basis. Uh, I think that's in meetings and walkthrough and practice. Uh, I think, you know, that's that's the goal. It's it's one day at a time. It's it's you know building camaraderie, building chemistry, um, and I think that that you, know, you, you build you you build that through through reps through practice, and that's that's where we're at. So we're taking it one day at a time. Uh, we're trying to get, uh, you know, better offensively, defensively in the kicking game. You know, as coaches, um, I think we understand that this, you know, just this doesn't just happen. You got to put time in and work in. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, 53 players, you know, count the practice squad, 69 players. Um, and I'm talking more regular season here, but, you know, you know right now, 90 players, um, you know, it takes, it takes, I shouldn't say it, uh, you have to work uh, to, to, to create the execution you're looking for during a regular season. So that's, that's what, that's what, and we do that one day at a time. So that's kind of where our focus is. Mm -hmm. And just having the fact that you guys were, you know, 10 wins last year, a lot of success, um, but still on the cusp of the playoffs, just having that in your background, how does, do you think that drives everybody's focus and, and wanting to improve even more from last season? You know, I, don't, I think we're more focused on this year. And last year was last year. It was a different team. There were different players. It was different. You know, we were in a pandemic. It's a different season. There's no, uh, you know, it, it was very different. So, you know, the focus right now is is this, is you know, this year and really today. Um, that's kind of where we're at. And trying to improve today, trying to get better today. And, uh, you know, if we string enough good days together, then, uh, hopefully we, we uh, you know, we'll put ourselves in position to, 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 to be successful. Joe. Hey, Flo, good morning to you. Um, how close is the team to any vaccination goal that you would like to see hit? And how important is it to reach any goal that may allow for greater flexibility in meetings, scheduling, and movement? Um. I think we've talked about this in the last couple of weeks. Uh, look, we, we, we educate the players and uh, and the staff, and we give them, uh, you know, all the information as far as the pros, cons uh, of vaccination, the different types of vaccination, vaccinations, uh, you know, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna. Uh, but at the end of the day, each, each, each player, each coach, each person within the organization makes their own decision. And... Uh, you know, we're comfortable with with, with that and like I'm, you know, don't we don't I'm not gonna get into anyone's you know medical situation or who's doing this or who's that I mean I'm, I'm happy to talk about my own but um, you know as far as getting into you know, how many people we have vaccinated non-vaccinated I'm not you know, again I, I, I think I've been pretty um, consistent and not not talking about anyone else's medical situation. One thing you do is plan for every scenario. Um, have you thought out the fact that some teams could have a competitive advantage over others based on their vaccination rates? Um, I mean, as of today, there are no, um, you know, we don't have information that would, you know, kind of support that. So, uh, you know, if that were the case, you know, and we're really kind of talking hypotheticals, I mean, if that were the case and, uh, you know, 
I, you know, if there's a competitive advantage, then, then, I mean, it's, it's hypotheticals. And I honestly, I don't, I really don't like to get into hypotheticals. Omar? I wanted to ask you about Jerome Baker. Uh, he's led the team in tackles for the last two years. Where is he from a developmental standpoint? And what do you want to see next from him uh, as a player? Uh, well, Jerome's made a lot of improvements and gotten better in uh, really all areas. Um, I think he's tough. He's smart. He's competitive. Loves to play his team first. Um, and he's really gotten better in every area. Pass coverage, uh, uh, run defense, uh, yeah, really across the board. So uh, he's, he's, he's a very good player. Um, you know, we're excited about um, working with him. And, uh, um, you know, he's a team guy. You know, I, I think that's the thing that that's that, that uh, you know, I, I, I like the most about him. He's a team player. Um, he wants to win. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're excited. We're excited to have him. We got time for one more. We'll go to Alan. Good morning, Brian. Um, what particular skill or trait do you feel might make Robert Hunt better suited to play guard than tackle? Well, I think Robert's a, uh, a good young, young player. Um, I think you saw him improve over the course of the season last year, uh, playing tackle. Uh, I think he's just, uh, uh, has a chance to be a, a solid offensive lineman. So, uh, whether that's guard, whether that's tackle, whether that's the right side, whether that's the left side, um, I think that's it, it, you know it's hard to say. I think we're going to play our best five, our top five guys, um, and um, I think he's got an opportunity to 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 be one of those five. You know where he lands or what, you know, whether it's guard or tackle, um, it's going to be up to him. You know, like like we talked to all the players, you know, he you make your your roles what you, what you make it, and uh, you know those guys, uh, you know, Rob in particular, since we're talking about him, uh, he's got an opportunity to to to, to play uh, to play. Um, well, that's guard or tackle. Uh, you know, that'll be we'll, we'll kind of figure that out as we get to uh, uh, training camp. You know, right now it's you know, with no pads on, it's it's hard to to see to to really see what you know you know this guard is a better guard is a better attack I mean we don't have pads on so it's you know, we'll, we'll make that decision come training camp.